In this episode of the Media Thumbnail Viewer, we're going to be setting up the cursor loader for our main activity. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, so we're going to be adding a cursor loader to our main activity. What this cursor loader is going to be doing is it's going to be getting returning a cursor to us with the parameters that we specified, which is mainly sorting out the date of the files and whether or not the files are an image or a video. So it's going to be returning a cursor with that information. And one of the advantages of using a cursor loader is all this happens on a background thread. Okay, so we'll make a start. As we mentioned, we're going to be adding that this to the main activity. So we can implement the loader manager. It's called implements. So we've got to call loader callbacks. And inside these parameters here, we're going to add our cursor. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be asked to override uh, three methods here. So implement three methods here. So I'm gonna select those. So I've got three here. The main one we're going to be working on on this tutorial episode is going to be the on create loader. Okay, so in here is we specify the uh, we specify what we want from the cursor when it's returned back to us. So first variable method uh, member I'm going to create here is going to be an array of strings and this is just going to be the details of each column that I want to look and want to search for so we'll call it projection projection and I'm just going to pass in three parameters here all from the media store files file columns first one's going to be the ID um, this ID is going to represent either a video or a uh, image. Next one's going to be a date added. I want to sort it so it's only the latest file show at the top of the recycle review. So we need date added. And finally, the media type. Uh, media type here. So that, that's basically what I want returned back in the cursor. Now I specify the selection on my selection criteria. So it's just a string member here. And I'll call this selection. And the first thing I want to check against is going to be the media type. And check it against, oh, that should be a plus because we're adding that equals as a string. Now we want to check it against if it's equal to a image in this particular case. Media type image. So that's our first criteria. Or, and we actually have to put that in there, or check it against same thing again but for video so be media store files file columns and again we check against the media type and we add the we add the string equals and in this case it's going to be the media store media type video so then we can complete that selection. And the last part is just to create a new cursor loader and return it. Okay, so this is going to take a number of parameters. We can just pass it this as the context. The next part's going to be the um, URI address. We can get that from the media store files get content URI. And this is going to be the string called external. 
Now we can pass in the projection, projection what we want returned back in the cursor, then pass in our selection. Selection arguments we can just keep for null for this. And now this is going to be date added, so we need the media store files. File columns, date added, and then we'll select that to descending. Okay, so that's the, um, this is our request for creating our loader. Now we need to initialize our loader. If we're going to initialize a loader, we're going to need an ID for that. So we'll create that ID. I'll just copy this here. And what should I call it? I'll just call it media store loader ID. Hopefully that's descriptive enough for what I need. Okay, now we when we initialize the loader, that's going to happen in several places depending on what version of Android OS we use. And we're going to sort of call it in the uh, check external port, check external storage permission method here. So basically, the method to initialize it is called get supported loader manager. Then init loader. Now we can pass our media store loader ID. We can set this parameter as null and we can set the context as this. And we're going to need to do, call that in a couple of other places depending on what version of Android OS in there. And also if you're starting an application for the first time, okay there, I'm going to have to paste it in again. We'll put it in this line here. Okay, so this is this just gets called when you accept read external storage permissions for the first time. Probably a good time now to comment out our toast. That was just for development purposes. And that is, I'm going to call a close to this episode. All I wanted to describe was how to set up the cursor loader for this activity. Um, as main benefits, uh, we're, we're going to be it can take a bit of time to generate your cursor because you can be running a number of queries. Using the cursor loader, this happens on a background thread. Um, once the cursor is generated, it will um, be um, provided to us on this onload finished method. And in here, we can then pass it, the, that cursor down to our recycler view adapter to be used by the view holder. That will happen in the following tutorial because we haven't yet created a um, recycler view adapter. We'll do that in the following tutorial. Okay, so yeah, this is an example of how you can use the cursor loader. We will now conclude this episode. If you want to get notified to the following episode to this one or any of the other tutorials that I'm working on on the channel, don't forget to click on that subscribe button just below me. And surrounding me is my social media accounts, and to my right is the social media accounts, so you can click on any of those if you've got a PC. Those will keep you up to date when I release a video, when I publish an article, when I upload code to GitHub source code, or any other announcements that the channel's got. Directly above me will be a link to my website, probably the best place to watch these videos. Not only do you get um, the video themselves, you also get the um, code descriptions of the changes made, as well as the details of how to get those code changes from GitHub. And if you've got any questions, any help, or anything else that you require from me, you're going to have to click across to the left hand side there and contact me on Code Mentor just so I can free up some of my time to help you with any of your requests. Anyway, that's it for this one. Bye for now.